Spoiler alert! This video is gonna be very nerdy, but super interesting. In my last video about NAM, where I shared how to obtain the best digital copy of our AMPs, I was basically trying to increase the quality of my profiles, just increasing the epochs. But then I received some comments, and one actually from Steve Atkinson himself, suggesting that I can obtain much better performances not only increasing the epochs. Well, as I love challenges, I started studying the NAM Python source code and well, I have been able to increase the quality of my profiles by 60%. Let's share my findings. First of all, I want to make this video not only in order to share my findings, but also to ask your help, verifying if what I'm doing is correct, and if actually there are other ways to increase our profiles even further, compared to what I'm doing here. Believe it or not, there are many parameters that we can change in the profiling procedure in order to change its behavior and to increase its performances. And in this video, I would stay focused on seven of them, which are the ones that I have studied in terms of behavior and about which I have found some info in the web. Obviously, feel free to suggest me to investigate even other parameters. I will now try to describe what I have understood about all these parameters also with some examples, and then I will provide you with the results of my simulations, which are very interesting in my opinion. First of all, we hear sounds in time order, and each waveform we hear can be considered as an extremely correlated series of data that follow each after the other, millisecond after millisecond. These waveforms we are hearing are at high frequency, so high that many samples are involved even for a very short sound, and each sample alone would not be heard in the same way without all the previous ones. So the first concept we should take into consideration is that a computer that tries to produce a sample, or better, to predict the next sample it has to simulate should take into consideration all the previous ones in order to make the right prediction. This is one of the most important characteristics of the neural network used by NAM, which is called WaveNet. I mean, WaveNet can predict the next sample not only considering the previous one, but many previous ones. In fact, WaveNet is pretty powerful and it is used also for text-to-speech. The parameters inside the NAM profiling procedure that allows us to define the architecture of its WaveNet neural net are in the file core.py in the directory NAM train. There are many parameters that are used in order to set up the architecture of our neural network, and in the last week I have modified two of them, which are called channel and deletion. Simplifying, the deletion defines the number of layers used to capture the dynamic response of our guitar amplifiers and serves to increase the receptive field of the network, allowing it to reach farther back in time to predict the next audio sample more accurately. The more the network knows about the signal in the past, the better it can predict the value of the next sample. In order to provide the neural network with more prediction pipelines, I have increased the deletion, trying some variants. This is the default and these are the variants I have tried. We will see the simulations and the results I obtained in few minutes. Another important parameter 
of our neural network architecture is the number of channels. I see this parameter as a way to define how many different properties of the waveform we want to capture. By default it is set to 16 and I have tried to increase it to 24, to 32 and even 64. Let's now talk about the learning rate. I noticed that Steven has changed this value few times, therefore maybe he is still trying to find the best values. The initial value were 0.004 for the learning rate and 0.007 for the learning rate decay. And now they are 0.004 and 0.05. Why these values are important? Well, the learning rate defines the amount of changes our algorithms apply for each iteration. Let's say I'm an archer and with the first shoot I was 10 centimeters far away from the target, but the target was at the center of my viewfinder. Well, it means that my viewfinder was not set properly and I have to calibrate it better. But by how much? Let's say I decide to change it for around 1 cm for the next 10 trials. Well, this 1 cm change could be considered the learning rate. As you can imagine, the smaller is the change, the longer it takes to reach the target, but the higher is the probability to perfectly hit the target after many trials. The learning rate decay, on the other hand, is applied when using the learning rate you are actually not really improving too much your shoots. I have tried a few settings and we will see the results later on on this video. Another parameter related to the learning rate is the batch size, which original value is 16. The batch size represents the portion of the data set that is going to be analyzed in each cycle, in each epoch. In fact, typically our computer cannot manage large chunk of data and therefore we have to use smaller chunk of data to increase performances. Typically a large batch size requires a lot of computational resources to complete an epoch, but requires fewer epochs to converge to the target. On the other hand, small batch size typically requires less computational resources to complete an epoch, but requires a high number of epochs to converge. A small batch size with a low learning rate will generally give better performances, but will take longer to converge. I mean, there should be a positive correlation between the batch size and the learning rate. When the learning rate is high, larger batch sizes give better results and vice versa. Basically, as I have used smaller learning rates in order to try to have a more precise neural network, I have also decreased the size of my batch size. The last and most mysterious parameter is the NY. It is originally set to 8192 and I've tried with 4096 and also with 2048. I'm sorry, but I have not been able to find documentation about this value. I have just noticed that decreasing it, the processing time increases a lot, but also the quality of our profile increases. Another parameter I have checked out is the gated boolean value in the architecture of our neural net. I read that the gated function should perform better and in fact in my test when I set the gated to true I was obtaining better results in less time. But unfortunately when I loaded the obtained num file in the num plugin it was not working. I don't know why. If you know please drop a message in the comment section below. Ok, let's try to summarize the meaning of all these parameters with our Archer example. The epoch is the number of trials I will make to train myself. For instance, 100 epochs mean that I will try to hit the target 100 times, hoping that with every trial I will improve the quality of my shoot. The learning rate is how much changes I make for every shoot. 
hoping to get closer to the target every trial. The batch size is related to the learning rate. Let's say that I'm 100 meters far away from my target. I would see the batch size as the portion of this 100 meter I would try myself. For instance, I would initially try with 10 meters, then with 20, etc. It is not exactly like that, but I just wanted to give you an idea. The dilation is my ability to memorize all my previous trials, all my previous shoots, so that the parameters I set with the next trial are considering all my previous mistakes. The channel parameter basically defines how many parameters I'm taking into consideration for each shoot. For instance, if I take into consideration the speed of the wind, how far I am from the target, which is the weight of my arrow, I'm using a channel which value is 3. And lastly, we have the NY that I'm not able to explain, unfortunately. Let's now see the results. First of all, with the standard setting, I was able to reach an ESR of 0.01. I obtained this result with 1000 epoch, with a computational time of 16 minutes. The UFS in the null test was minus 40.8, with a theoretical limit of minus 53. Please check out my video in the card above for more info. For the trial number 2, let's keep the epoch fixed to 1000 and increase the dilation and the channels, decreasing the learning rate and also the batch size. What are the results? Well, the ESR went down to 0.00638, even if the computational time went up to 40 minutes. So I obtained a 36% increase in performances, but more than doubling the computational time. As I said previously, if we decrease the learning rate, we are trying to increase the precision of our neural net and therefore we need more cycle to converge to the target. So let's double the epoch with my trial number 3. These are the results. We are reaching an ESR of 0.00541, increasing our computational time to 1 hour and 20 minutes. So a 46% increase of the quality of our profile, but requiring almost 5 times more processing power compared to the standard setting. And now let's increase the deletion and the channels even further, setting them to 2048 and 32, with our trial number 4 still training for 2000 epoch. Well, I reached 0.00464 ESR, so an increase of 57% with 6 times more processing time required. Let's now go crazy with the epochs training for 5000 cycles with our trial number 5. Well, we reached an ESR of 0.00434, not too much gain versus our trial number 4, but with a lot more computational time. Let's slightly change our training rate now, setting the decay to 0.003 with our trial number 6, where I reached an ESR of 0.00520. So it seems that the best learning rate and decay are 0.001. But let's investigate even further the learning rate. Now I want to really enhance a lot the precision with my trial number 7, using a learning rate of 0.0001, still training for 5000 epochs. Well, the ESR actually is getting worse. I think that the more you increase the precision, the more you have to increase the number of epochs, but the computational time starts to become not manageable. In fact, I increased the number of epochs to 6000 with my trial number 8. And actually, I was not reaching the performance of my previous settings with just 2000 epochs. And now trial number 9. I want to change also the mysterious NY parameter, dividing it by 2, and therefore setting it to 4096, running for 5000 epochs, and reducing the training rate to the most performing one used in our trial number 4. Well, I reached 0.00398, a 
and my computational time went up to eight hours. So an increase of 60% in quality with basically 30 times more processing power. Wow. But what happened to the LUFS in the null test? Well, it went down to minus 41.6 dB. What a poor gain increasing the computational time by 30 times compared to our previous tests. Let's now check out my trial number 12 and 13. They are equal, but I have used 4096 NY with 3000 epochs for the trial 12 and 8192 NY with 5000 epochs for the trial 13. Well, basically the computational time is equal both requiring 4 hours and 2 minutes. But actually the trial 12 seems to be a bit more efficient, reaching a slightly better ESR. And actually there seems to be a relation between the epochs and the NY parameter. I mean, half NY gets almost the same ESR in the same time, but with 3 fifths of the epochs. Now let's apply this principle to our trial number 13 where I'm using the same parameters of my trial number 4, but with 3 fifths of the epochs. Well, we are getting almost the same ESR in almost the same time. So I would basically leave the NY fixed to its original value of 8192, just changing epochs if I want to improve the ESR. OK, now with my trial number 15, I want to use the same parameters of my trial number four, but I want to use 64 channels. Well, the result is actually worse. Therefore, I think that the best number of channels is actually 32. And now my last test. I wanna set up a much more complex neural net with a lot of trainable parameters. And for this purpose, I would use some suggestions I read in some blogs and articles. Basically using a dilation like the one shown in the picture and with the same parameters of my trial number 4. Let's check out the results. First of all, the trainable parameters jump up to 134,000. So this is the biggest neural net I have trained so far. But what about the results? Let's see the results together. Wow. So at the end I would say that the best settings were with the learning rate set to 0.001, 32 channels, a deletion of 3 set of layers, a batch size of 8 and the NY set to 8192. Pretty cool. Here I am obtaining a good increase in ESR without getting crazy with the computational time. Now Steven, in his comment in my video, wrote that he was able to reach minus 56 LUFS, which is crazy, and I'm still far away. So here I need your help. What else I can do? The next things I want to try is to train once more an already trained neural network, but this is a topic for another video, and I actually don't know how to do it. So please feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment section, and it would be very nice if you could share your test numbers so that I hope we will be able to define together the best profiling settings. Thank you so much for watching such a long and technical video and see you soon. Bye bye.